Hello students, this is Ms. Dalton and this is video 8.1 which is which goes over solving higher degree polynomials. Okay, so in this unit we're going to talk about um, higher degree polynomials. That means um, anything greater than a degree of 3. So a degree of 3 would be like x to the third, degree of 4 would be x to the fourth, and then so on. So anything higher than an x to the third, a degree of 3. So I want you to remember these special factoring patterns that we talked about when we did our factoring unit. Uh, when you have a sum of cubes, remember that's two terms that, are, that can be written as something to the third power, and you're adding them. Uh, remember that that is going to factor to be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So an example of that is 8x to the third plus 27, because that can be written as 2x to the third power plus 27 is 3 to the third power. And so the a becomes 2x and the b becomes 3. So we have 2x plus 3 times, then if you do a squared, that's going to be 2x squared, which is 4x squared. And then you multiply a times b, um, so that would be 6x, or minus 6x, and then you do b squared, so that would be 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, then we have the difference of cubes, which is very similar, but it has a subtraction sign in, the, in between the cubes. Um, and then that's going to factor to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And so when we talked about this when we were factoring, I showed you that if you start with a difference of cubes, then that first parenthesis is going to have a minus, and then everything else in the second parenthesis is plus, okay? But if you have a sum of cubes, then we start with, that's going to, if you start with a plus, then that first parenthesis is going to have a plus, but then the middle term of that second parenthesis is going to be a minus, okay? And so that's the big difference between these two uh, patterns. Again, you'll get these patterns to, I'll have them on a formula chart for you, so you'll get to use them on any assessment, but um, you should start to recognize these. All right, so I do expect you to have all of your factoring down. Um, this is not a unit where I'm going to talk about factoring because that should be something that you have, um, that you understand by now. If you don't understand it, please make sure that you're coming in for tutorials so that I can go over uh, the factoring with you. So when you are factoring to solve here, let's just remember your steps. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look for a GCF. So that's going to be a common monomial factor. Then you're going to look for a pattern. And remember, your patterns are difference of squares, perfect square trinomial, and then a sum or difference of cubes. And so there's some examples there um, for you. Then um, if you have a pattern, um, then go ahead and use that. If you don't have a pattern, then look for grouping. You're gonna do grouping uh, with four or more terms. Remember, you can get a trinomial to be a four-term polynomial by using um, the A times C chart or the box method, whichever one you feel comfortable with. And then you would set each factor equal to zero and solve. Okay, so let's just review factoring. Um, let's take these examples right here. If I'm gonna factor three y to the fifth minus 48 y to the third, hopefully you recognize that you do have a common factor, which is three y to the third. So if I divide that out, then I will be left with y squared minus 16. Then I recognize that that y squared minus 16 is a difference of squares. So that's going to factor to be y plus 4 times y minus 4. And then that's as far as I could go. And since we're just factoring, 
then we would stop there. If I was solving, then I would take it one step further and set each of those factors equal to zero. Okay, let's look at this next one. So we have 125 end of the third plus 216. So as soon as I see only two terms, then I immediately think, okay, is this either a difference of squares or is it a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes? Well, since I have a cube term there, then I'm gonna look for the sum of cubes. 125 n to the third is the same thing as five n to the third power. 216 can be written as six to the third power. So this represents my A, 5n, and then my B is 6. So if we go back and we remember what our pattern is, um, the pattern for sum of cubes, we're going to take that A, 5n, and we're going to add to it the B, which is 6. Then in our second parentheses, we're going to square the A, so that would be 25 n squared, then we're going to do minus multiply a times b, which would be 30 n, and then add to it b squared, which would be 36. And that's as far as you can go when you have a sum of cubes. Okay, next. Now we have y to the third minus 7y squared plus 4y minus 28. When you see four terms, I want you to immediately group the first two and then group the last two. Then look for a common factor. So for that first group, I can divide out a y squared and I'll be left with y minus seven. And in the second group, I can divide out a four and then I'd be left with y minus seven. Notice that the parentheses match, which they should. So our first factor is y minus seven, and then the second one is y squared plus four. Now, even though I have y squared plus four, that is a square that's a quadratic and it only has two terms, but the only pattern that I have for a quadratic is a difference of squares. This is not a difference of squares, it's a sum of squares, which you can't factor any further. So this would be your final answer. Now let's look at the other one. Now this one has three terms, and notice that it starts with an a to the fourth, but think of, think of like if you had x squared plus seven x plus six, right? I could factor that real easily. Notice that that x, the first term takes that middle term and squares it. Well, if I look at this one, I have a squared. If I square that, I'm gonna get a to the fourth. So I can still factor this in the way that I factored it um, when it was just squared, but in my when I do my grouping, the first term is gonna stay the same. And then I wanna figure out, okay, what are factors of six that would add up to seven? Well, that would be six and one. So in this next two spaces, I'm gonna have that one a squared plus six a squared, because those would add up to give me that seven a squared. And then I'm just gonna have plus six. So now go ahead and group. Our whole objective was to get it to be four terms so that now we can group. Divide out your common factor. So I have a squared times a squared plus one plus factor out the six and you'll have a squared plus one. Okay, those match. That's your first factor, a squared plus one and then the last factor is a squared plus six. Again, these are quadratics, but they are sums, so I can't factor it any further, so that would be my final answer if I'm factoring. So now let's take it a step further, and now let's solve it. So it has four terms. I'm going to go ahead and group 
Now remember when you group this last two, I want you to change that to a plus and put the negative with the y like that. Then you would factor out the y squared, which would leave you with y plus three. When you factor out in that next one, make sure you divide out the, uh, the negative one, which would be y plus three left over equals zero. These match, that's your first factor, y plus three. And your second factor comes from the outside, y squared minus one equals zero. Now, y squared minus one is a difference of squares. So you're gonna have y plus three, then do your difference of squares, y plus one times y minus one equals zero. Then when you're solving, you just take it one step further and you would take each of these factors and set them equal to zero and solve it. So setting that first one equal to zero is gonna give me a y value of negative three. Then the second factor is gonna give me negative one. Then the third factor, when I set it equal to zero, is gonna give me positive one. So these are my three solutions for that polynomial. All right, last example. We have four terms. Now, I would check to see if it has a common factor, 5, 15, 12, 36. There's nothing that would go into all four of those numbers. So go ahead and group them. Take your first two, group them. Take your last two, group them. Look for a common factor of your groups. So in the first one, I can factor out a 5b squared, and I'll be left with b plus 3. In the second group, I can divide out, let's see, a 12. And then I would have b plus three left over. So my first factor would be b plus three. Second factor would be five b squared plus 12 equals zero. Set both of them equal to zero. Set this one equal to zero. And then set this one equal to zero. Even though it's a quadratic, still do that. So in this first one, you would get b equals negative three. Now on this one here, since you just have a squared, then what you could do is you could do five b squared. You could move the 12 over, so that would be a negative 12. Then you could divide by five, and then you could take the square root. So you'd end up with b equals plus or minus, it's gonna be an i, because when you take the square root of a negative, remember that's equal to i. Then you would take the square root of 12 over five. Now, for this purpose, um, you can just leave it like that. Uh, normally, you, again, because it's a complex solution, then you can just leave it like that. If it was a real uh, number, then I'd want you to go ahead and simplify it. But these are your three solutions because you do have two um, complex solutions with that plus or minus i. All right, so this is factoring to solve higher degree polynomials. Please make sure that if you have any questions, you get those answered. Just write them down and we can go over them in class.